my children are the kind of children who wake up at five o'clock in the morning, sometimes 4.30 since they were tiny. Like I can remember getting up with Eli at 4.30 every morning when he was a baby and that was just the time. And then we would stay up for an hour or two and he would go back to sleep at seven. And of course I'm, I can't do that. So I was up for the day <laughs> and we did not have a farm when he was little. So when we moved here onto our farm and we got this um, place and started building stuff, it was totally to my benefit. There's chores to be done. Um, this morning, it's like almost eight o'clock. All of my children are still asleep. This is my second cup of tea alone. If, <laughs> if you recharge with alone time, you know you know, this is so precious. So I'm going to soak up a few more minutes. I'm going to read my Bible and uh, enjoy my quiet time. My house is so quiet. You would think that they're not even here. It's so weird. <laughs> See, that is why I have this teacup. Happy dance. My kids are sleeping. <laughs> You guys, what am I going to do for seven whole days without my kids? Seriously. All right. Two of my kids are up, but the other one is not yet. Before I make them breakfast, I thought I would take you out here real fast and show you. So it was supposed to rain today and now it doesn't look like it's going to rain until later. Probably when we go to the farmer's market. <laughs> That's how those things work, right? So I thought I would come in and show you. I forgot to show you guys the plants that I got from... The tomato lady's place for one and for two um things are growing and I thought I would show you really quick so here's a quick look at the greenhouse I'm starting to empty it out this bed right here I've been waiting for the gladiolas to start popping up and I know we're supposed to get another frost tonight although I could still frost the whole time I'm gone so um anyway they are starting to come up. So I may get those transplanted because I need to put these squash and tomatoes, not tomatoes, sorry, squash in here and more cucumbers and things. Um, and I don't really want to wait till I get back. So we'll see. Um, but from the tomato lady, this is one of the things I got. I needed another blueberry. So I've got this beautiful blueberry right here. And, um, I got some flowers, which I think are in the kitchen garden. I'm going to take you over there. So <laughs> I thought I would show you guys. Oh, no, here's another one. Ah, okay. So these gooseberries that I have, we we went ahead and potted those up. Um, I showed you these. These are from the Hartman's place. So when we potted them, ah, oh, there is one right there. So do you see the damage on the top of it? Sorry, it's wobbling here. Ah, see this damage right here? That's from these little green caterpillars. So it looks like I'm going to have to go through and see if I can find more. I see a little like cocoon on there under that leaf. Do you see it? It's not going to focus on it. Anyway, um, but here's the damage that was done to some other ones. <sighs> Stripped completely bare. So I'm praying that they make it and that they come back to life here. I'm really bummed about that. Um, so it looks like I'm just going to have to keep a really close eye on them. We potted up a whole bunch of... They don't look very good. They're still sad. Uh, these are horseradish. They don't really like to be moved, but they were in this bed. And <laughs> I did not want that. So I did get some peppers in. I have a row of beans and I have some cucumbers along the back there. This is our unheated greenhouse. It's pretty chilly in here today, but um, everything's been doing just fine. So I'm thankful for that. And that little patch back there, that's been our salad greens and we've been harvesting those and eating them almost every single day. Uh, what is the temperature? Yeah, it's like 40 degrees in here. I thought it was pretty cold. <laughs> That's, that's not not the best. I'm going to take you into the kitchen garden that we planted up, and I'll show you some of those things. Real quick before we make it over there, this rhubarb is like going crazy, but right now, if it's nice out, I am working in the garden, and I'm not cooking or cleaning. <laughs> um, so I, I know that's terrible, 
but I'm so on a, like, I got to get this stuff done and in before I leave kind of kick. So uh, it is what it is. The strawberries that we planted together, they're doing so good. So this bed is doing really good. And we did go ahead and get the asparagus in. It's super tiny, so you can't even see it. Here's one right here. Um, <laughs> it got really leggy, but this bed is not doing as well. I'm not sure why these strawberries didn't transplant very well. Um, but I have a feeling they're going to perk up and be just fine. Look! So all my peas are coming up. This row is peas right here. This is spinach. There's some greens. Um, let's see what else we have. Here's some different kinds of greens. Here's some mizuna. Um, a couple of these rows, like this one, I don't think we planted. This row is coming up. This row, I think, is radishes. There are beets that are coming up right here. And we have... I thought I had more peas in here. I know I do somewhere. Oh, here they are. Here's some more peas. Yeah, we just have stuff coming up all over the place. I'm so excited. Those are some chives that I had planted over there in the corner. And then right here, I put in... I did find some Jerusalem artichokes. I've been looking for those for so long. We don't have a ton planted in this bed yet because it's mostly for beans. But um, this row is up right here. What else? Yeah, this bed's doing great. This is like lettuce. This is all the lettuce here. And we've got some more peas. And then all the rest of this is beets. And I'm going to plant our, pea our beans out here really soon. Uh, now let's see here. So here's one of the plants I got. I had to just bring these home because, I mean, look how pretty that is with the purple over there. So I've got those. Oh, I can see that a cat was in here. Yuck. Well, this did look really pretty before they got in here and wrecked it. Thank you, kitties. Yes, look, and now he wants love. That's not nice. So I guess I'm going to replant these. So much for not getting dirty. I'll come out and do that in a little bit. Um, these are the pink and white dandelions. So hopefully I can save them. I can see like broken off leaves. That's not nice. No. Stay out. Stay out. Be a nice kitty. This row, let's see, this bed has quite a few things. We've got a few onions and some radishes, peas along the back. And then all of this is carrots and stuff. So that'll take a little while longer, I think, to pop up. And then I transplanted a few leeks. And then here are a few other plants that I got from the tomato lady just to make this pretty hanging basket. My petunias did not do very well this year so I had to get some more but I just these are one of my favorites and then I thought this one was pretty fun. After we went morel hunting the kids happened to find them here on the property so I'm going to show you what we decided to do with all of our morels. Hey you guys welcome back to my kitchen. I know it's been kind of a while huh? So I thought to myself, I could eat all these morels that we got. And then my kids were playing today and found a morel, I'll throw it up on the screen, in their play area. Can you believe it? We went all the way out in the woods only to come back and find them already growing on our property, which I am super stoked about. We do have wood chips spread like everywhere and especially in the play area to keep the grass down. It, mostly the... um napweed down so they can play and not get scratched legs. So I thought maybe we should actually make what's called a mushroom slurry. So we're making morel slurry. slurry. And there's, I've seen several videos. I've never done this before with mushrooms, but I have like, I'm just going to go with what looks good. And I'm kind of taking a couple of different videos and putting them all together to make my own. And hopefully it works. Hopefully we end up with morels growing everywhere all over the place next year. I don't know. So it's pretty simple. We just have a couple of ingredients. So I've got my helper here. You're going to make the mushroom smoothie with me. Great. We're making a mushroom smoothie. Let's tell them what we have. We're not going to drink it. That's gross. I'll make you a regular smoothie later, okay? Deal? I'll take this one. Okay, let's make this first. Yes. Okay, all right. So <clears throat> we have our blender here. It's just a regular blender. Uh, so we have, no, nope, we, my face. no, then you need to scooch, so honey. See. They need to see too, okay? Okay, 
So we have some wood ash from our wood stove. From what I hear, you do not want any wood ash that's been rained on because that's already what taken the nutrients know? out. So we have wood ash from our stove. That's gonna raise the pH wherever uh, fires have been. You know that morels pop up everywhere. So we're just gonna simulate that. I have salt, which we're not gonna put in the blender, but we are gonna put it. We're gonna get a five gallon bucket to start our slurry off to a good start. So the salt's just gonna stop the growth. This is non-iodized, don't get iodized salt. So we also have, it doesn't really matter, measurements don't really matter. Um, we're just gonna make it so that we can, cause we're gonna mix all of the things right now in the blender and then we're gonna mix them into a bigger container. So for now we have well water, it doesn't have chlorine in it. If your water does have chlorine, you wanna make sure you get like filtered water. Um, just don't get anything with, with chlorine in it. That will kill the spores and the mycelium. We have some unsulfured molasses, the same thing. Like you don't want anything in this mix that's going to kill the mycelium. What? Um, I wonder what color it's gonna be. Ew, I don't know. What color do you think it's gonna be? Mm -hmm. mm, I guess we'll find Rainbow. It. Rainbow? It's gonna be rainbow, she says. Okay. Um, I also have some sawdust. Uh, this is like bigger, you could use tiny wood chips. I don't really want to put that much into my blender since we do use this for food. <laughs> um, but I'm just going to put this in there and that's going to give the mycelium something to latch onto. And then of course you can't make morel slurry without your morels. So I've got these guys here. So we're going to put these into our blender. I think I'm going to do two batches um, because I'm going to use, I'm going to just going to use all the morels I don't that we want got. This we're going to go touch. hunting again. You guys want to go with us again? I don't want this to touch my hair. No, don't put it in your hair. Ew. <laughs> we have been so much. We have so it. much. And then this paper bag, I'm actually going to slice it open and go put it out in the garden too because it's probably covered with a zillion spores on the inside. So I'm gonna cut it open, flip it upside down and put it out there too. So I don't know, hopefully it will help. We're kind of making this up as we go, right? So we're gonna pour those in there. All of them? No, we're gonna do half and half. So that's about half of what we got. We're gonna put some of our wood ash in here. Why don't you drink it? Ew, Eli, we wouldn't drink it. We're gonna put some water in there. I don't think this is rainbow colored. I think it's gonna be brown. We're gonna put some molasses in. The reason we're adding the molasses is to give some food to our mycelium to get them going. So I'm just gonna do like a couple of teaspoons, I guess. Mommy, can you please help a little Like bit? I said, this is just the base and then we're gonna dilute it with um, water in a five gallon bucket. And then later, the guy that I watched, I'll try and link his video. If I can link his video, I will. Um, he said he has had best luck with taking his original five gallon bucket and then diluting it in like 20 other buckets and then pouring that all out. So I think we're gonna try that, why not? That's disgusting. I know. And we're gonna add some wood chips here. What chips? Kind of, yeah, sawdust. All right. Um, what's back? Yeah, it's probably smoothie. Yep. Like grayish brown. My blender doesn't sound great because it's getting kind of old. I think I'm just gonna stick the rest in. It doesn't smell great. Ew. Here we go. Like I said, I'm gonna keep this bag. Look at these beauties. So pretty. Okay, right? Yeah, we gotta do it again. Okay. Here we go. Is that all? Yep. Oh, looks like we need to work a little bit more here. I think I'm gonna rinse the lid off and pour it back in there because no. I don't, I don't want to lose any of this good stuff. There we go. Are you gonna drink it, mom? No, yuck. Okay, I will mix the salt, the rest of these wood chips and the rest of this ash into the five gallon bucket. So I think I'm gonna take you guys outside to do that. I don't know. All right, so I've got our five gallon bucket here. I have our mushroom slurry, salt, the rest of the wood ash, and the rest of these pine shavings. So I'm just gonna 
dump those in there. These could be fur. I can't remember. One of the two. Hopefully they're fur because I think morels like that. Woo! A little windy. I'm going to go ahead and add our salt here. He said a couple of teaspoons. You don't need too much. It's just to stop bacteria growth. And then I'm going to go ahead and pour this in. And again, I'm going to rinse this out into the bucket. Okay, now I'm going to just fill this bucket up all the way to, you know, roughly the top. He, in his video, the, the main guy that I'm following, he did use an aerator in here so that it doesn't become anaerobic, which just means there's no air in it but I don't have one. So I'm gonna just come out every once in a while and stir it. And then you're gonna leave it for 24 to 48 hours. So I'll probably leave it for 48, maybe. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so we'll see. I'll just leave it till tomorrow afternoon maybe or um, the day after. Just kind of depends on how much time I end up with. Uh, this is a gardening day. Tomorrow is going to be a cleaning day. So I don't know if we'll end up dumping out mushroom stuff <laughs> tomorrow or not but anyway I'll take you guys along for that and then I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens with it okay guys potatoes are planted onions are planted I'm filthy <laughs> and uh I realized I have this mushroom stuff still sitting here so it's been two days exactly since I did it so I have a second bucket here and I'm just gonna fill it halfway because that's easier for me to carry and then I'm going to pour in a little bit of this into the blue bucket. This is just plain water. It's a dirty bucket because we used it with weeds. And I'm just going to spread it all over the place. Um, mostly where I have wood chips, I think, is my plan. Um, but And I'm honestly not going to take you guys with me because I am so tired. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that's the update with what I'm going to do here. And I guess we'll see. I hope we get a whole bunch of morels next year. So yesterday... With the mushroom, the morel mushroom spores soup <laughs> smoothie, as my kids call it, I pretty much lined every single bed in here with it. And I just went through and like this mound behind me, I put it all over that. So we'll see. I'm hoping that it will really do well. Um, these honey berries are just going crazy. Thought I'd show you that. Yeah, look. So they're fruiting out now. So exciting. And then I also wanted to show you this guy here. It's a little chilly right now, so they might be mostly closed. But this bush, it, this is a Yasta berry. It's completely covered in blooms. There's here and here and here and all down, like every single branch. So I'm super excited about that. Okay, and then I'm going to take you over and now I'm going to show you the... Um, potatoes and onions that we finished planting yesterday that's out in the food forest so I did get this whole garden this is our cellar garden I got this whole thing weeded except for the high tunnels which are going to be for peppers and I thought since it was going to be so cold today and tomorrow I want to wait one more day to put them out but along this panel here I planted peas they're not up yet this is like really late. Usually I have peas in, especially this kind of peas in, I have them in the end of March, very beginning of April at the latest. So for me to have them in and it's almost June, well, mid-May, it's crazy, but it's been cold. It's been, it's been a cold year. Um, we do have one row of onions that we had put in and we plugged a few more in to the very end of that row. But otherwise this garden is kind of waiting I'm planning on getting in the broccoli and cabbage and cauliflower, but mostly that's a sum summer garden area. This is the kids' garden, and we've been working on getting their little plots in. Here is our amazing, amazing patch of onions. I am so excited about this patch. So, no, there is not straw. If you watch the video on how to plant onions with me, um, when I am planning on putting the straw in, but I wanted to wait until we were able to get the rest of the onions and the potatoes planted. So now that's done and now we can go ahead and put our straw layer, layer down. And what that's going to do is just keep the weeds out. So we did have to weed this patch. 
but that should be the only time we really have to weed it. But these guys are doing so, so good. I'm so excited. Um, so this entire thing all the way down to the very end, this is all onions. So I'm hoping to have for once a whole year of onions. Okay, so this section does look a little bit weedy. It's all right, I'm gonna finish it up. Um, this was the end of the onion row, but I had done so much work yesterday that I got too tired, so I didn't wanna finish weeding. Um, but I did wanna show you, okay, so this is like, this was tilled two or three years ago and then never tilled again. So we've just left it. Last year it didn't get planted out here. Uh, two years ago though, we had potatoes, not in this particular section. This bed was just left empty. But this area right here, so I wanted to kind of show you the difference is yes, we have a tiny bit of grass in here, but these are all potatoes, all this whole section. Um, this was dug in the ground, and then we put some compost, and then, do you see what I see? Do you know what those are? Those are wild turkeys. <laughs> I don't, that's our old pig pen. I'm not really sure what they're doing in there, but they look really happy, and they're clearly not bothered by me. And this morning, poor Finn, so that's Finny, her cat, he was trapped in this big tree by a huge raven that's been bothering us. In fact, that's another thing I should show you an update on, um, is the ducks, the duck eggs. Well, I'm just going to let them do their thing. There's not much I can do about them being in there other than chasing them off, but they'll just come right back. This is kind of hatching season for the wild turkeys, and we are almost always in fact ever since ever since we very first put that big garden in well the little part of it we've had a mom turkey hatching turkey eggs and they would come and the babies could fit through the fence so she'd let them come eat and then she'd stay on the outside then she'd call them and then they'd off they'd go and they're so cute and I I am perfectly fine with that I encourage wildlife to be here um, as long as they're not doing too much damage and in the pig pen, they're fine. They're not going to do anything back to the potatoes. So here's the huge difference. These potatoes right here, we put them in the ground. Then I covered them with some compost and then I covered them completely with wood chips. At the end of the year, we were able to harvest quite a lot of potatoes out of here. We did lose Oh, about half, I would say, two voles, unfortunately. And I would have waited, but I really, I needed to be able to put them in an area that had rested, and this is the space I had that had rested the longest. So in they went. Well, digging in this area was so easy. It was like cutting butter with a knife. It was so simple. Um, so these two rows were the best. And the weeds, even though it kind of looks like a lot on the camera, it's really, there's not that many. But then these two rows here on the edge, they, it was a lot harder. The farther away I moved from the wood chips, this area was only tilled when we very first put in the food forest. So that was like five years ago, four years ago, something, something like that. I forget how old the food forest is, but, um, but the weeds, there were so many weeds. It was crazy. So I did weed through all the way, except for that very, very end patch where I just got too tired. So my plan is to, you can see the pile along the edge there of wood chips and I'm gonna flick those back over and then I will recover all of those rows with wood chips. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing with these ones um, that are here. And then probably those longer rows right there, I will also cover with wood chips. But I'm also not only gonna do that, but I think I'm gonna put in the old goat bedding he must have got into the catnip. Where is he? There he is. Look at him. I better get them out of there because they're going to wreck my peonies and they're about to bloom. Well, they should bloom when I get back. But anyway, um, so my plan is to first put a layer of the straw, which is the old goat bedding straw, so they get some fertilizer. And then I'll also add in some wood chips on the top. Kitties! and into the catnip again, which is everywhere. We have tons of it. Why are you being crazy? Hey. 
Penny. Huckleberry. Mm hmm. <laughs> Sweet as can be. Why do we have cats? Because we have voles. But these guys do just as much damage. Don't you? Maybe not just as much. They're good hunters. There's the ducks. They went out for a walk. Do you see them? They're very happy in this little patch. So the ducks are just kind of out free ranging and that's very good for them. They're so happy to do that. I told you about that raven. I have only caught it in this pen one time. But a couple of days ago, we looked out the kitchen window and the, I mean, he is huge. He's such a big raven. He flew off out of the barnyard with something black. Now we have a few Cayuga ducks and they are black and, um, there's some more ducks out of the woodchip pile. <laughs> he flew into a tree and I'm wondering if he had a baby duckling. We should have had baby ducks uh, last week for sure. And we haven't had any yet. And I've been, I've been watching the nest. Like I said, I've been watching it, keeping an eye on things. The cats have been fine. I've been watching them. And there is mama still sitting on a nest. And we just keep finding broken eggshells, but no baby ducks. So I don't think we're going to end up with any baby ducks. Honestly, I think that, I, I just think that she's sitting on rotten eggs. So I think I might just pull her out before I leave on my trip. We'll see if she gets any, I don't know. I, this is one of the reasons why I don't let moms incubate usually because it's just so stressful and everything can go wrong. And not that I, not that I believe in being fearful and all of that. I just have never had good success. If you have had good success with moms, leave it down in the comments for me. Like, what did you do? How did you separate them? Every time I move moms and they break all their eggs and then they don't, then they break out of broodiness. Um, I've never tried it with ducks before. I've only done it with chickens. And anyway, it's, I just never had great success. So if you have, I'd love to know what you do. I would love to not have to run an incubator <laughs> um, next year. This year we're taking a break from incubating. Next year we'll do it and we'll have baby ducks and baby, hopefully geese and ch turkeys and I don't know, chickens. We'll have all the, all the things. It'll be super fun. That's kind of the updates going around on around here. The nettles experiment. I think I'm working my hands just so much right now that it's really hard to tell if the nettles are actually working. Right, so I have spent a lot of time in the garden this week because, well, it's May, the end of May, and it's time. So my wrists um, have been really hurting, especially yesterday. So I stung them four days ago now. And I would say that the first day, I definitely didn't notice any swelling, which I normally would get, especially when I sleep. And then I had much less pain and then now it's diminished over the last few days. So I probably should have done this yesterday, but it was busy and I didn't have time. So I actually am going to go ahead and do some more stinging nettles on my right wrist. My left one is mostly fine, so I'm going to leave it. Yeah, I'm just going to keep, keep testing this out and see how many times does it take until I actually get results. And if this doesn't work, I have a backup remedy that I've been wanting to try for a while. It seems to be a good remedy preventing carpal tunnel. So we'll see. This is my basket right here and I just turn them to, this is how I dry them. Some of these leaves are still fairly fresh like this one. I'm going to do the back side this time and the top here because I don't know there. It really, really stings. It's not very fun. Actually, I think it stings more this time than <laughs> I did the first time, but I think I'm anticipating it more. But anyway, I now I'm just going to let that be and I'm going to go do my garden work. I would say I've definitely had less swelling, which that's what nettles do. They're anti-inflammatory. So from that perspective, I think it's great. I'm going to continue stinging myself probably every other day or every day for the next five days, I think. And that should produce results of some sort. I did end up sleeping in a brace last night because my hand hurt so bad, but I did all of those potatoes I showed you. So I think that that's part of, 
part of why my hand is so bad right now. It just is the time of the year. So, oh well, it's okay. I'm not complaining. I just wanted to let you guys know that that's where it's at. I So right now, would I recommend stinging nettles? I don't know. Not necessarily. Not in the method of stinging, but it could change. We'll see. So I'll let you guys know in a future video how that's going. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this update video. There is so much going on right now. Like I said, I was hoping to be able to have some recipes for you today, but it looks like it's going to be a better planting day. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. On the homestead here in Idaho, you really have to just take advantage when the weather is wonderful. <laughs> you just have to do it. 